there are students when they come to the college that really don't know what they want to do. They say, well, science, forensic science, that sounds nice. I'd like to wear a badge and carry a gun and track down physical evidence and work those, those funny pieces of equipment. It is a pleasure for me to change a person's life by laying out the steps in a career. My project that I'm currently working on is uncovering a new reagent to uncover latent fingerprints. It's too polar. So when you put it on an evidence document, which is where they would want to see most of the fingerprints, it'll de-ink the entire thing. So you have the good fingerprints, but the evidence is gone. We don't always focus on what science is. It's this process of inquiry, process of discovery that they don't often get in traditional classes. The lab actually studies Hokobi antiviral protein. These cancer cells that are continuously growing can be destroyed by, by this mechanism, and therefore the person could continue to survive. We offer three tracks, one in molecular biology, one in toxicology, uh, and one in criminalistics. It's kind of charting how your shoes change over time so that if you found a shoe print at a crime scene, you can analyze the shoe when you find it and say within a certain degree of certainty if it's the right shoe. By the time you get to the senior year, you're learning things that were just recently discovered. I mean, you're approaching the limits of what's known. Because we know the Parkinson's disease is a genetic disease, but also environmental factor play a very important role in this disease. Her lab is looking at the role in which pesticides may be playing in the onset of Parkinson's disease. And in the brain, patients with PD, their dopaminergic secreting neurons begin to diminish over time. And it's becoming more and more widely accepted in the field that pesticides may be playing a role in the onset of PD besides a genetic factor. The kids here is absolutely amazing. The changes that have occurred, they're doing presentations that are honestly at the PhD level. And I attribute a lot of that to the program known as PRISM. Several things had come into place. One, the department had increased in size. We had taken on several more faculty members, and uh, those new members came in with the understanding that they were expected to do high-quality research and to take on undergraduate students wherever possible. And rather than taking a piecemeal approach to this, what we did is form this program, PRISM, which takes these various funding sources, pools them together, and administers the funds far more effectively than we could have done individually. And it really has helped identify students that could work in research and also giving them the, the proper direction so that they match up with someone who's interested. Because it's always better if a student picks a project as opposed to someone giving it to them. And we didn't learn these things magically. This, this knowledge didn't fall out of the sky. Someone in a laboratory discovered all of these things. And so when they start to participate in the same process makes all of that content come alive. Your, your mentor is like, well, you know, you didn't necessarily find out what you set out to seek care, but maybe this shows something else. Our mentors are just teaching us what they know. They're always there for you, and he honestly made me the scientist that I am going to become. I couldn't have done it without him. She's able to troubleshoot and to help me with the project. If the project isn't working, we're both frustrated together and brainstormed trying to figure out to make it better. An experiment failing is not a failure in itself. It's just learning how something doesn't work. No research project ever is 100% successful. Even if it isn't successful, it still adds something to the literature. You know what not to do. One of the experiments Jason ran, there was a slight miscalculation in some of the concentrations he was using, and it led to an equipment contamination. This equipment contamination, there were not at all dangerous levels of materials in the lab. After this happened, we eventually developed an independent project that he did on his own, which he did a fantastic job with. And this story that starts out a little bit questionable really finishes incredibly strongly because he is really the first undergraduate I've had who has done all of the research on his own necessary to generate a scientific publication. I'm just amazed at how much I have accomplished because I would have never thought I would have done it. Um, and certainly a school like Stony Brook, I was, I was blown away when they said, you know, we want to invite you for an interview to come over to the college. I plan to come back here to John Jay and get my master's in forensic science. I got accepted into the MCD program, which is Molecular Cell and Developmental Biology. I'm enrolling in an MD-PhD program at the University of Miami. It's perhaps the toughest 
graduate professional program to gain acceptance to in North America. I'm thinking so far that the, I'm getting the PhD in pharmacology because with my background in talks, I really loved it. Science isn't a clear-cut path. You don't, it's not a recipe that you follow from beginning to end. You may wind up somewhere that you didn't expect to wind up. You may start some place that you didn't think you would normally start. 